As a data person, you are typically concerned with making a better model. Maybe you want to have more accuracy, or maybe you want to have better business performance. But all in all, we like better. One way of getting a better model is to do some tuning. And the most typical and often heard form of tuning would be to try and tune the hyperparameters. These are things like learning rates for some algorithms, but you can also imagine some pre-processing that they also have some hyperparameters that you could tune. But more often than not, there's actually this other form of tuning that tends to work quite well, in particular if you're dealing with binary classification, and that is to go for thresholding. To be fair, there is an interaction between hyperparameters and setting the right threshold, but as of somewhat recently, scikit-learn actually has some tools that allow you to pick an optimal threshold automatically, and that's going to be the topic of today's video. So let's quickly go over a little bit of theory when it comes to thresholding, and again, I'll be talking about a binary classification. And because it's a binary classification, you can assume that I'm dealing with some sort of a machine learning pipeline that emits a number between 0 and 1 that could be roughly interpreted as a probability, or perhaps phrased differently, this could be interpreted as some form of confidence. But in such a scenario, you can say, well, I've got this spectrum of probability values that could come out of my machine learning system, and it will always be between 0 and 1, and the closer you are to 1, the more likely you are at having a positive class label, so to say. So. Now, being able to emit a probability is great, but there's actually a second thing that needs to happen, and that is that we have to make a choice. If I have a probability spectrum over here between 0 and 1, then you can imagine that a very natural way to split up your positive and negative labels will be to say that there's this 0 0.5 threshold in the middle over here, and everything that's higher than that, that's going to be positively labeled, and everything on the other side, uh, that's going to be negative. Now, the thing that we should, of course, remember is that this value over here, this 0 0.5 threshold, that is a little bit arbitrary if you think about it. We totally have the freedom to move that threshold around a little bit, and the choice of that threshold can actually have quite a significant impact. Let me try and make an uh, imaginary chart about that. On the x-axis over here, I'm going to depict the threshold, and on the y-axis over here, I'm going to write down some sort of a benefit, some sort of utility. Well then, what I could do is I could do an experiment where I try out a threshold value over here, and then I check what the actual benefit was. I could do this on a test set, I could do that on a train set. What you can hopefully imagine is that there's going to be some sort of a curve over here, and that the curve doesn't necessarily need to have a peak around the 0 0.5 mark. And especially if you have a custom business metric, where different kinds of mistakes have a different value, they can hopefully totally imagine that this is going to be the case. Personally, I have also found that tuning a threshold tends to have a larger effect than tuning a hyperparameter. And that's mainly because there is, in general, a very direct mapping from the threshold to the benefit that you might achieve. In earlier versions of scikit-learn, I would actually do this research by hand. It's not the hardest for loop to write. But nowadays, you can actually automate this. And let's demonstrate how to do that. So let's dive into the code. In order to automate this threshold tuning, these days you can just go to the model selection module of scikit-learn and then import this tuned threshold classifier CV object. It is very similar to other cross-validation objects in scikit-learn, except that in this case, we won't be cross-validating lots of hyperparameters. In this particular case, we are going to be comparing lots of different threshold values. A lot of the inputs should still feel familiar, though. You have to give it a estimator, followed by some sort of a metric that you can use to score the threshold. In this case, I've got a dictionary of business metrics. You might remember this from a previous video. But this is effectively just a scoring function inside of scikit-learn. Because I'm interested in observing the results later, I also set this store CV results equal to true. Otherwise, I'm not able to inspect any of it. Afterwards, I specify the amount of thresholds that I want to check. In this case, I'm going over 200 different thresholds. And then I'm also saying that it can go ahead and use all the workers or CPU cores that are on my machine. This definitely helps speed it up if you have a big number over here. After that, you can give it some data to train on, 
and you can report the best threshold that it has been able to find so far. And in this particular case, it seems that we're dealing with a very low threshold for this particular combination of estimator and training data. Now, one really cool thing about storing these CV results is that you can also then generate a pretty informative chart. So again, I have this tuned model over here. I have set these results to true, so that gives me this CV results dictionary. And inside of that, there are thresholds as well as scores. I'm using matplotlib over here to generate me a line, but I'm also just drawing a single dot uh, that represents the best threshold. And then for this particular data set, this is what the chart looks like. You get a nice big orange dot over here indicating where the highest value was found. And you also see a bit of a shape of the threshold curve, which can also tell you a little bit of information. It really does seem to be pretty flat on this side, and sure, we found the highest value, but it mainly feels that the business value is going to suffer a lot the moment we get closer and closer to a 1 over here. So I would argue that's still pretty insightful. One thing to also just observe in this particular case is that I am really dealing with a specific business metric, and the choice of the metric can really influence the optimal threshold that you're going for. When I scroll below over here, you're going to see that I've effectively got the same script, except that in this case, I'm going for accuracy instead of the business metric. And in that case, the best threshold actually is found smack dab at 0.5. So there you go. The optimal threshold for your business metric doesn't necessarily have to coincide with the optimal metric for a classic score like accuracy. The Tune Threshold Classifier is a really useful component, but there is one small detail that I might recommend you keep in mind. This is a relatively small dataset, which is why training all of this takes about a second. It doesn't really take that long. But inside of this tuning loop, this pipeline over here is also being retrained. That is great for generality, because you can put elaborate pipelines in here that might be doing hyperparameter tuning and things like that. But in practice, that really can come at the cost of compute time, and that might not be what you're interested in. It could be that you're just interested in tuning the threshold a little bit at the end of your training procedure. So in the code here, I'm training a pipeline, and I'm assuming that it's just fit, and then I only want to do some threshold tuning afterwards. Well, in that scenario, then I don't really care about doing much cross-validation for this internal estimator over here. And the way to configure that is to set CV equal to prefit. This way, it's not going to cross validate this pipeline on all sorts of different subsets internally. And I also set refits to false because, again, I'm assuming that this pipeline over here is static, and refit equal to true would indicate that I'm interested in retraining this estimator on the entire data set afterwards. If I already have a pipeline that I'm content with and I just want to do some thresholding, then these are the settings that you are uh, going to be interested in. And just to make that final comparison, before we had one second that we needed to train the whole thing. And when I train this variation, uh, then we are uh, in millisecond land, and we are definitely a whole bunch quicker because we're just quickly checking some threshold values. The final thing that's worth mentioning at this point, if you are considering going down this pre-fit route, is that it is recommendable to use a separate holdout set to do this thresholding on. You don't want to reuse the train set over here because that really opens up the door to overfitting. If you're curious to learn more about that, the show notes will have a link to a scikit-learn doc that explains this in more detail. Having said all that, I do hope you give this tuned thresholder classifier CV object a spin. There's a lot of good that you can do by tuning the threshold and having a system to be able to automate that is also just very nice to have around.